what is a Harrington rod? When a patient receives a diagnosis of scoliosis, one th thought that goes through most patients' mind is surgery. And when patients think of surgery, the most common thing they hear of is something called a Harrington rod. What is a Harrington rod? What was it used for and how can it affect the body? Well, a Harrington rod is a rod that's used in scoliosis surgery with hooks and screws that are attached directly to the spine. And the goal is something called spinal fusion. And the, the number one option or goal of spinal fusion is number one is to stop further progression. That's the number one reason why patients um, go through spinal surgery or Harrington rod surgery is to stop progression. However, over time, because of the improvements of surgical procedures and the, actually the invention of something called the pedicle screw, the spinal fusion and trying to stop further progression now can also help try to straighten the spine. So now they're actually trying to reduce the curve as well as stop progression. But the number one goal of spinal fusion is to stop further progression. That is the primary goal. When we look at something like this, spinal fusion, where they're putting rods and screws in your side, your, throughout your, the area of the way you have the scoliosis, you know, when is this typically recommended? Well, when it comes to the traditional approach of scoliosis, the traditional approach breaks down scoliosis into three main categories. Mild scoliosis being less than 25 degrees. In this stage, they normally recommend nothing. They're just watching and waiting. And when you get from 25 to 40 to 45 degrees, um, this is when it's called moderate scoliosis. And in this stage, if you're an adult, they're again doing nothing. They're just watching and waiting. If you're uh, Adolescent scoliosis in the age group that you're considered to be rapidly progressing, typically that puberty age group, they may recommend a brace to try to slow down progression. Once you break 40 to 45 degrees, they call you severe, and now you qualify for spinal fusion if this is something that they think they recommend in a rapidly progressing adolescent scoliosis. And they would also recommend it in the adult stage if the patient's experiencing pain or discomfort as a result of the scoliosis. So basically, spinal fusion is, when, is recommended in the traditional post once you hit this severe category, 40 to 45 degrees or greater. In the conservative approach, our goal is to try to prevent spinal fusion. Our goal is to try to reduce it. And normally what we, we recommend is it only we only recommend spinal fusion if, number one, if the patient is not responding to conservative care, meaning we're using our conservative approaches and we're not seeing reductions. And normally in cases of severe scoliosis over the age, over the size of 60 that are not responding. Um, and because our goal is to get patients below surgical levels, which would be 40 degrees or less, but we also have some patients that have more severe curves, meaning 80 degrees or 90 degrees or even 100 degrees, and they fear what scoliosis surgery could do, meaning fusion. They're concerned about the long-term results and what living like with a scoliosis rod in their spines, and they utterly review, refuse surgery. So these patients we treat conservatively, even though they're not going to, they're not going to have scoliosis surgery. Even though they qualify for it, I mean the curve is big enough to done it. And the bottom line is this: is that traditional approach is very reactive. They pretty much do nothing, very little, to actually reduce the curve until the curve becomes big enough to have surgery, and then surgery is really the only option in trying to reduce it. So it's like they do nothing and they just react as the curve becomes worse. However, in the conservative approach, we think more proactively. We like to treat curves much sooner in the, in the process because we know if curves become bigger, 40 degrees, they're going to recommend surgery. If you really think about it, at 25 degrees or less, they do nothing. At 40 degrees or greater, they put a rod in your spine. That's a 15 degree difference. I mean, that's not a lot. And 15 degrees in a growing child can happen in a very short time. So if we know that, we know the end stage is full spinal fusion with rods and screws in your spines that can lead to lots, can lead to other issues, wouldn't we want to act as soon as we see it to prevent that from ever happening, act more proactively? So the key thing, difference in both those approaches is conservative approaches like mine, we act much sooner because we know the end stage consequences. We know if it becomes that size, what that means, meaning they're going to be recommended surgery. So we treat curves much sooner. The big question is here is, if I have fusion, is my scoliosis cured? No, there is no cure for scoliosis. Even in spinal fusion, even in conservative care, there is no cure. We're just normally, in most cases, managing the scoliosis. Scoliosis is an uncurable condition, and there is no procedure at this point 
that cures it because in most cases of scoliosis, we don't know what caused it. So therefore, we're just managing the curve size and you're either managing it with, with therapy, rehabilitation, exercises and corrective bracing and those kinds of things, or you're managing it either with screws and rods and surgeries. But either case, you're managing the curve. You're not correcting what caused it because we don't know what caused it. And unfortunately, in scoliosis fusion, there's no guarantee, even after fusion, that curves won't still progress. And in fact, most still progress even above and below. And we know there is a loss of reduction that initially gets achieved in scoliosis surgery, normally within, within the ter first two to five years. So it's not guaranteeing that there won't be any progression. It's not guaranteeing that you're going to have a straight spine. You're just going to have a reduced curve now with rods and screws in your spine, unfortunately. What does like, this look like? And the big debate is, what's a patient better off with? Are they better off with their scoliosis, let's say at 45 degrees? Or are they better off with a curve at 20 degrees and rods and screws? And the problem, the truth is, no one really knows. Nobody's really studied this really long-term, meaning I'm talking about 30, 35, 40 years later. There's, we, we don't know. But we do know once your spine is fused, there is a loss of spinal flexibility that your spine no longer functions like it's supposed to. There can be unfortunate increased pain post-surgery, increased issues with the hardware itself. There can be a tremendous amount of fear with that patient knowing that they have rods and screws in their spine, that something could happen. They can get into an injury or an accident that can cause the, the, the hardware in their spine to have an issue. They, there's also a fear of maybe this thing could actually break inside my body. And hardware longevity, we know, is an issue. We know no hardware in your body lasts forever. There's probably going to have to be some type of revision or, um, over time. But the problem is we don't know because nobody's ever followed these patients that long. There also can be an adverse reaction to the hardware itself. I mean, you can actually have an allergic reaction to the hardware, and they have to pull these screws out and pull the rods out. And once that happens, it becomes a much more complicated issue. Some patients that have actually had this surgery have come and, and, and asked me, should I have these rods removed? And I honestly believe probably removing the rods is probably more traumatic than firstly putting them in. So the idea in my, uh, in my idea is that if we can do anything to avoid this type of surgery, if anything can be done to avoid this type of surgery, surgery should be a last resort treatment. It shouldn't be the treatment that you just wait for it to worsen and then, okay, let's go ahead and do it. Everything should be done to try to prevent this type of surgery because we know so little about the long-term results of this surgery and what it actually does to people and how it affects them over their entire life. So my recommendation is be proactive. If you have scoliosis at any size, small, mild, uh, moderate, severe, be proactive and treat it now because as curves progress, we know they progress in every age and every size uh, scoliosis. As they progress, you come closer and closer and closer to getting that recommendation of surgery if you weren't already given it, given it. So therefore, you be proactive, use different treatment approaches to produce different results than just watching and waiting for your curve to become big enough to qualify for surgery. If you're the more proactive you are, the more the, the more the more aggressive you are in trying to reduce and stabilizing the scoliosis, the greater chance of you never having that recommendation. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.